Daf Yomi Tractate Bavakama, page 87a, with the words Vechain Hayah Rabbi Yehuda Poter, Potro, we call Dinim Sheba Torah. And so did Rabbi Yehuda exempt a blind person from all judgments of civil law that are in the Torah. The Gemara explains, what is the reasoning of Rabbi Yehuda? The verse states, with regard to an unintentional killing, then the congregation shall judge between the smiter and the avenger of blood according to these laws. Numbers 35.24 To teach that anyone who is subject to the halakha of a smiter and to the halakha of an avenger of blood is subject to civil laws. And anyone who is not subject to the halakha of a smiter or to the halakha of an avenger of blood, including a blind person, is not subject to civil laws. The Gemara presents another statement of Rabbi Yehuda. It is taught in another Brayta that Rabbi Yehuda says a blind person does not have, in other words, does not receive compensation for humiliation, and so did Rabbi Yehuda exempt a blind person from all mitzvot that are stated in the Torah. Rav Shesha, Rav Shisha, son of Rav Edi, said, What is the reasoning of Rabbi Yehuda? The verse states, And this is the commandment, statutes and laws. Deuteronomy 6.1 To teach that anyone who is subject to civil laws is also subject to to the commandments and statutes. And anyone who is who is not subject to civil laws, including a blind person, is also not subject to the commandments and statutes. Amr of Yosef, Meresh Haviamina. Rav Yosef, who was blind, said, At first I would say, Man Damar Halacha Kabri Yehuda, Damar Soma Patur Min Mitzvot. Rav Yosef, who was blind, said, At first I would say, if I hear one who says the halakha is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Huda, who says a blind person is exempt from the mitzvot, then I will host a festive day for the sages. What is the reason? It is that I am not commanded, and nevertheless, I perform the mitzvot. Rav Yosef continues, But now that I heard the statement of Rabbi Hanina, as Rabbi Hanina says, one who is commanded and performs the mitzvah is greater than one who is not commanded and performs it. I say, if I hear one who says to me that the halacha is not in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, then I will host a festive day for the sages. What is the reason? Is that it is that now as I am commanded, I have more reward. New Mishnah. Uh, this halacha is a stringency with regard to a person who caused injury compared to the halacha with regard to an ox that caused injury. The halacha is that a person pays compensation for damage, pain, medical costs, loss of livelihood, and humiliation. And if he caused a woman to miscarry, he also pays compensation for miscarried offspring, as the verse states. See Exodus 21-22. But in the case of an ox that caused injury, the owner pays only compensation for damage, and he is exempt from paying compensation for miscarried offspring. The Mishnah continues. One who strikes his father or his mother, but did not cause them to have a bruise, and therefore is not liable to receive court-imposed capital punishment, and one who injures another on Yom Kippur, the punishment for which is not court-imposed capital punishment, is liable to pay for all the five types of indemnity. One who injures a Hebrew slave is liable to pay for all the five types of indemnity. This is except for compensation for loss of livelihood suffered during the time that the injured slave belongs to the one that injured him. Since the right to have the slave's labor belongs to the master... His inability to work is his master's loss. One who injures a Canaanite slave belonging to others is liable to pay for all of the five types of indemnity. Rabbi Yehuda says Canaanite slaves do not have humiliation, so the one who injures the slave pays 
only the other four types of indemnity. The Mishnah continues. The Mishnah continues. The Mishnah continues. The Mishnah continues. With regard to a deaf mute, the imbecile are minor, an encounter with them is disadvantageous. In other words, no favorable outcome is possible for someone involved in an incident with one of these people, since one who injures them is liable. But if they were the ones who injured others, they are exempt. This is because they lack awareness and are not responsible for their actions. Similarly, with regard to a slave and a married woman, an encounter with them is disadvantageous, since one who injures them is liable. But if they were the ones who injured others, they are exempt because they do not have money with which to pay compensation. But they pay compensation at a later time. The exemption is only temporary, as if the woman becomes divorced or the slave becomes emancipated and they have their own money, they are liable to pay compensation. The Mishnah continues, One who strikes his father or his mother and causes them to have a bruise, or one who injures. Another on Shabbat is exempt from paying all five types of indemnity because he is judged with losing his life. The court imposes capital punishment for these acts, so there is no additional monetary punishment. And one who injures his own Canaanite slave is exempt from paying all the five types of indemnity because his slave is his property. Again, not applicable for today. The Gemara, okay, now Gemara. The Gemara discusses the case of compensation for injury. Rabbi Elazar raised a dilemma before Rav. In a case of one who injures the minor daughter of others, to whom does he pay compensation for the injury? Rabbi Elazar explains the dilemma. Do we say that since the merciful one granted the profits of her youth to the father, as he receives her betrothal money, compensation for injury also belongs to her father, what is the reason that he should receive it? The reason is that the one who injured her lowered her monetary value, resulting in her father receiving gifts of lesser value when she is betrothed. Or perhaps is it only the profits of her youth that the merciful one granted to her father, because if he desires to give her in marriage to a man afflicted with boils, he can give her to him. But with regard to injury, since if he desires to injure her, he may not injure her, just as he may not injure any other person. The merciful one did not grant him the right to receive the compensation when she is injured. 